of beta decay. So you should have done the research yesterday and you would have found that the neutron decays to a proton and an electron. And because energy, mass and momentum weren't conserved, Wolfgang Pauli suggested the, that another particle could have been emitted. Now, he suggested that this particle was very small and it was neutrally charged. And because Pauli was Italian, he decided to call it the little neutral one. So the little one with no charge. And that translates as neutrino to Italian. <coughs> so the beta decay of a neutron now is actually a proton plus an electron plus a neutrino. And you should be able to write the nuclear equation for that. I haven't put it down here, but um, we'll see it later on via the notes. So we have a little diagram there. We have the neutron on the left-hand side, and the neutron decays, gives out a beta particle, becomes a proton, and gives out a neutrino. And as a result, the three things that should be conserved are conserved. Energy mass, momentum, and electric charge. Now, let's look at electric charge. On the left-hand side, the electric charge should be zero, because a neutron has no charge. So therefore, on the right-hand side, the electric charge should also be zero. A proton has a charge of plus one, an electron has a charge of minus one, so there's a net charge of zero there, and the neutrino has no charge. So before, no charge. Afterwards, there's no net charge. Now, here's another way of looking at beta decay. <clears throat> so a couple of things there. If we look at the text at the end first, the neutrino has no charge, small mass, and interacts very, very uh, little with matter. It was so um, difficult to detect because it doesn't interact with matter, that it, was, it wasn't until 1956 that the two guys, Cohen and Rhines, detected the neutrino. And I think they won the, um, the Nobel Prize in Physics for that as well. Now, look at the diagram. And this is a little bit more complicated. It's kind of above your pay grade at the moment. But by the end of the topic, this should make sense. What we have there is a neutron decays to a proton and a beta particle and a neutrino. That's the text up at the top. So if we look at the diagrams then, on the left hand side you have this circle with three smaller circles in it d d and u or what i'll often refer to as u d d that's the neutron and the neutron is made up of subatomic particles um, up and down quarks is what they're called we'll come across those later too <coughs> so we have one up quark and two down quarks and during beta decay the prop what the physicist proposed was that one of the down quarks became an up quark so if we go Beyond the blue arrow on the right hand side, we see we now have this thing that has two U's and one D, two ups and one down. And so that thing with the quark composition of two ups and one down actually turns out to be a proton. So the suggestion was that during beta decay, the down quark, or one of the down quarks, becomes an up quark. And in doing so, it has to give out two particles to balance the energy mass, the momentum, and the charge books, essentially. So when the down quark becomes an up quark, it also gives out an electron and a neutrino. And that was a bit more detail about what um, physicists suggested on how the electron became a new particle. It all comes out with the subatomic particles. That last bit is, um, we haven't done it yet. I don't think you're expected to know that much depth on it, but it's no harm because every year I do get a question on how can a neutron become a proton. And you just have to understand that there are subatomic particles that can flip or change depending on um, interactions and forces. And as a result, um, you get a neutron changing to something else. Okay. There's a video here. I'll post that on Edmodo. Watch the video. It's only three minutes long. There's some good, good um, background information on it. And I'd ask you then just to write down what are the three flavors of the neutrino. There are three types. <coughs> 